Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more FIFA 22 career mode. Here today on the channel, we have episode 4 of my AS Roma series. Here today, we've got a bunch of matches in the league. We're also going to be kicking things off in the Coppa Italia. So, if you'd like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. We're currently 7 points off top place. We sit in 3rd with 40 points. Drawing with Inter, who sit in 4th. Madison has left Leicester City to join Manchester United, which is a really interesting move. We're in the January transfer window. And I'm not going to be signing on anyone here today. We want to try and generate some cash for the um, transfer deadline day. So I will be signing players in the next episode. So let me know feedback and suggestions still. Interesting. First real highlight coming here against Stellaranitana, whatever the fuck they're called. Uh, 50 minutes in. The corner kick was a failure. Bernadeschi recycles it. Edison Cavani finds Isco, who's had a little bit of a resurgence in this career series. He's been up there with the goals. Edison Cavani had an amazing episode. The dude could not stop scoring, which is really helping us in the league now that he's hit the ground running. I don't know what's happened to Tammy Abraham. My god, that guy's form has fallen off a cliff. Um, I think it's just because he's just not high enough rated, unfortunately. And even someone like Edison Cavani, who's been struggling this career series, he's 85 rated. So that's like seven more than what Tammy is. It's been tough um, for the Englishman. And I've been giving him plenty of game time as well. I started him a lot earlier in the season. I was rotating both of them. But unfortunately, it's just going to be... Cavani leading the line, I think. Like, I can't afford to put Tammy in. And we've taken the lead here, of course, uh, leading 1-0, thanks to that 55th goal from Isco. And that's how it ended, a sneaky 1-0 victory. A lot of draws, a lot of 1-0 results. They seem to be the, um, the two dominating fixtures in this career series, which is hilarious because we're really copying Jose's uh, form, usually. So we've got a match here in the Coppa Italia, round 16 against uh, Hellas Verona. So, would really like to make the cup final in this one around. At home, against Hellas. Let's go. Ball comes in. Pellegrini actually starts off the scoring, who has yet to score an, an, a goal in the entirety of this season. This is his first goal in all comps that I can remember. And he starts off the scoring against Hellas Verona. Interesting name, Hellas. Does that have anything to do with Greeks? Do they have some Greek lineage or something? I don't know. Does anyone know the facts around Hellas Verona? Leave it on the comments. Anyway, we've started off the scoring here with a must win in the knockout rounds of the Coppa Italia. Pellegrini, El Capitan, starts off the scoring, putting Roma in front. But I'm really happy with this team. Six months in, halfway through the season. Lloris is solid at the back. Or Magnoli, Spinozola have been amazing. Thank God Spinozola hasn't picked up an injury. Selic has been decent as our right back after we dropped Florenzi. He's just gone down too much in stats. Played all right at the start, but his form fell off as well. Vertout has been amazing since Christie got dropped. El Shawari's been inconsistent, but we might need to look to get rid of some of the aging players. Isco, um... Everyone else has been pretty good. Uh, Manchester City have signed Mbabu, which is hilarious. Rebic is currently the top goal scorer, and we go now to a match against Spezia. At the Stadio Olimpico, at home, let's try and pick up another win. We're still undefeated, boys. 24 minutes in, that's all it took for Roma to start off the scoring. Vertout with the goal, coming from the depths of midfield. He sometimes picks up a goal on the cutback, getting slipped on in because of this 4-5-1 formation. It's great to see the goals spread evenly all around the pitch. Obviously, Cavani had his sort of resurgence. He dropped back a bit. Isco found Vertout. But as you can see there, Isco, Cavani, Pellegrini, all of them were getting man-marked, and that allowed Vertout to come charging on through with the attacking momentum. Obviously, the central and slash defensive midfielder isn't going to be marked. So that's why he was able to score in the 25th. We were looking really, really good in this match. Second half is now. Still coming out, oozing with confidence. The boys go forward. Bernadeschi chips it on in to El Shawari on the volley. And he scored some brilliantly looking goals. 
So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of suitors for not just him in January, but a lot of these players. But a great ball in. El Shawari on the volley. Has scored some sick and wicked and wild looking goals in this career series. And that really clinches the win for us there. Fantastic volley from El Shawari. Left of the netting. Still got it. Still got a little bit of gusto with him. And we lead 2-0 over Spezia. And that's how it ended. A really good result. We could get one late here, hopefully, depending. No, Cavani fucked it up. <laughs> it was a 2-0 uh, victory in the end, like I said. All right, back in the Coppa Italia. We've got the quarterfinals now against Atalanta, which is a more difficult side. Harry Kane is signed for Liverpool for $120 million, And Stefan de Frey has left Inter to join Bayern, which is insane. Because Inter have been doing pretty well. That's really weak in their defensive backline. It might have given us a chance. So back in the Coppa Italia. Second half. Very, very cagey match. It has taken until the 80th minute for us to even get a chance. Isco, good ball over the top. On the ball now. A little bit of skill moves here. Trying to bait the Atalanta defense. Vertout somehow finds Bernadeschi. Never fear, fellas. The Bernadeschi is here. He makes it 1-0 just before the 86 in the pouring rain. We managed to sneak the lead late against Atalanta, who both in real life and in career mode are a ultra-competitive footballing side. Their youth academy is off the charts. You'd be blown away how many current players have come from the Atalanta Youth Academy. Like Kessie, he's joined Barca recently. There's a bunch. Uh, Kulaket, uh, Kulisevsky is another one. Um, who like went, he started at Atalanta, uh, Atalanta and then moved to fucking Juventus and then Spurs. Like it's, it's kind of insane. And we're going to sneak the 1-0 victory. And now they're fully licensed, dude. I've been hyping them up. Maybe I should play as Atalanta. Atlanta what my American viewers would say, I suppose. But we pick up the 1-0 win, which is pretty decent. Back in the league, with our consistent form, we're still undefeated. We're four points away from Juventus in first. They currently sit in second as we get stuck into Florentina. At home this time around, hoping to pick up another win. We beat them uh, earlier in the season, of course. Isco, Cavani, scores. Not the most sort of high energy ball there. Just perfectly placed it. And once again, it's that man there, Edison Cavani, with his unbelievable, beautiful finesse shot. It's spectacular to see the amount of times he scores like that. Look at that, man. Right footed as well this time. Nice Elastico skill move. Hits it near post. OP. And unfortunately, is it Dragovic or Dra well, Dragowski, the fucking Polish goalkeeper? I can't remember his name. You know what I'm talking about. Slightly couldn't get to it. And Edison Cavani scores seven goals in 22. Not too bad from the old aging ox. We started off the scoring well nine minutes in. And then we got a second golden opportunity here, thanks to El Shawari, who fires it into Vertout. Cavani, back to Vertout, gets the goal. Yeah, I'm actually blown away by Vertout's goal-scoring acumen, especially for a midfielder. Like, he's actually rivaling Pellegrini and Isco's output. It's kind of like, oh, you see the threats, you see the Isco, you see El Shawari and Cavani, if you're an enemy opposition side, and you're like, oh, fuck, we've got to man-mark them out of the game. And they sort of allow these little underrated midfielders, like Vertaut, like Christie, to actually go forward and score. And uh, we've further increased our lead there. And that's how it ended. 2-0 against Florentina. They're going to have one last chance here, but Spinozola and the boys are going to hold out the result. Well, unfortunately, I've got to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for episode 5 coming out tomorrow, where we will have the January transfer window. Looking a little bit forward to the calendar ahead. Back in the league, we'll be facing Atalanta. Rebic is currently the top goal scorer, followed by a Genoa player who sits in ninth. That's why they were doing so well this season. Amobile sits in third. Moriel, 
dude, look at all the goal scoring from various players. Verona up there as well. Dude, they're all nines. Jorginho, nine. Osman nine. Concalves, nine. Cap Capriri, <laughs> whatever. Caprari has nine as well. So there's a lot of teams that are fighting for the league this season and those European places. It's exciting. It's ultra competitive. So, unfortunately, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and sub if you haven't already. Would really appreciate it. Stay tuned for episode 5 coming out the exact same time tomorrow as we continue this Roma career mode series. Thanks, guys. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.